Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Church on a Sunday morning. Sure glad you're tuning in today from wherever you may be. And I am so excited to bring you today's service. This was our children's Sunday that you will remember. Uh, our children are taking part all the way through. They're doing some presentations. They're doing some singing. They're taking part in communion. And we've got a children's message that you'll get to see and be a part of. And at the end of service, you'll see the children celebrating and praising God. It's just a beautiful Sunday. And I'm just so excited to bring it to you. I'm going to take you right now to the sanctuary while I open up with prayer and praise and worship will follow. I'll be back right after that to give you some announcements. So here we go to the sanctuary. I'll see you back in a few minutes. Would you stand up with me? Worship team, if you'll come on. I just want to open up with a couple of verses from Psalm chapter 8. It says, Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength. Jesus actually quoted this verse in the Gospels, and he called it, he says, you have ordained praise. Strength and praise in this verse is interchangeable. Because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. And we just believe in this place, I believe this scripture so much, that as we teach our kids to worship the Lord, we teach them to praise God with all their heart, it will silence the foe and the avenger in their lives. Amen? Amen. As we praise to get God together with them, there is something that happens. There is a battle that takes place in the spirit realm. And so when we praise, we're not just singing happy songs. We may be happy, but we're not just singing happy songs. We are doing warfare in the spirit, and we are fighting for our children in the way that we praise God, amongst other things that we're fighting. Do you believe that this morning? Yeah. Amen. So we want our kids to praise. We want our kids to be excited about praising God. Because if they'll learn it now, they will never forget the joy of praising God. Can we pray, Lord? We just thank you this morning for how great you are, how good you are, how awesome you are. We love you. And Lord, this morning, oh God, we just want to praise you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. And But we want our children to learn to praise you from a young age. Oh God, to, to learn, learn the joy and the, and the fun in praising you. And Lord, as they lift their, lift their voices, they lift their praise, oh God, it is not just a happy sound. Oh Lord, but they are actually doing warfare. We are doing warfare with them against the enemy that would try to steal, kill, and destroy in our lives. And Lord, we just lift up, we want to lift up your name today. We want to worship you. We want to praise you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, because you are worthy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Can you give God a big shout of praise? Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 See 
to you, Lord. Lift up his name. You say.
Thank you. Until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after. Goodness, God. I will sing. 
of God, I want to thank you all for your prayers. I start a new job on Tuesday. Yeah. Jessica, sometimes in that waiting we get a little bit impatient, don't we? But God is always on time, no matter what. He's always on time. He, he's not going to put us somewhere that His plan is not for us to be. So when we listen to the voice of God and we take the time to really seek His will for what we're supposed to do, you know, if we don't really listen to His voice, we can step into something that's going to be ten times worse than what we were doing before. So we have to follow God's urging and His plan for our life and do it in His time. I'm excited for you, Jessica. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. to him for making a way when there doesn't seem to be a way. 
those moments we felt so lost we couldn't find ourselves. He was there the whole time making a way, making our paths straight. Even when we didn't see it, God saw everything.
welcome back. Sure hope you enjoyed the praise and worship. And just it's so important to worship the Lord no matter where you are, in your home, in your car. You can experience God's presence anywhere as you lift your voice and your heart to Him. Um, so I, typically on our online service, we take communion together, and we're going to do that today. But I want to take you back to the sanctuary in a few minutes, and you'll see a couple of our kids taking part in that together. So encourage you to get your elements together, get them ready, and um, prepare to take communion in just a few minutes. Do you want to remind you that if you want to, you can give online. Uh, you can pay your tithes, give an offering, whatever you choose to do. Just go to www.calvarychurchswva.com, and uh, you can give right there. And I want to go ahead and pray and uh, just thank God for the offerings and the tithes that are received. But I also want to pray for any needs that you may have. And know that you can always message uh, me directly um, through the, our church Facebook page. Uh, if you have my contact information, email, phone number, always reach out. We also have a church messenger group uh, that we'd love for some of you to be a part of if you want to. And prayer needs are shared on there as well. We're praying for those needs as they come in at any time of day or night. So um, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I just thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give and how you've been so faithful to us during this difficult time. And so many, oh Lord, have struggled financially during this year of 2020. But Lord, I thank you for your provision and your blessing in our lives. And so, Lord, as we tithe, oh God, we want to honor you. We want to put you first and give of our first fruits to you. But even beyond our tithe, Lord, we want to give those things that you put in our heart to give offerings to. And Lord, we want to make a difference both locally and around the world through our giving. And Lord, for any needs that may be on people's lives and hearts right now, we ask you, Lord, to move on their behalf. We ask you for miracles. Lord, I believe you're still a God that heals. You're still a God that delivers. You're still a God that saves. Hallelujah, Lord, you're a God who makes a way where there is no way. And so we right now ask, oh God, that the peace of God, the, the presence of God, the joy of the Lord will come into everybody's home and in their vehicle and their own heart and mind. And Lord, that depression will go, anxiety will go, and the peace of God will rule and reign in our hearts. I thank you for that. Lord, we just give you praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to take you back to the sanctuary. You're going to see some special songs uh, from the kids, and you'll see communion led by them, and it'll, we'll just keep it rolling, and you'll see a great children's message brought by Kevin Holmes. I know you're going to enjoy that. I'll see you at the end to tell you bye before we're finished. So here we go back to the sanctuary. See you in a little while. So, um, yeah, so I was just thinking about communion today, and communion is something that is a family affair. It is not something that's just for grown-ups. There is no kitty table. Amen? At communion. Way to go. She just ripped that thing off like I'm taking charge of this thing. Thank you. All right, wonderful. Good job. And so, hey, how are you all? Glad you're here. So I thought we're going to involve them today in this. So um, there's a couple of verses, you know, that teach us about training children. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he or she should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. And so part of the job of church is to teach them to honor and to love Jesus and to understand what it is we do. Now, how many understand everything about communion? You just got it totally nailed. You know, you know the, 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 the end result of all the theology that goes into communion. Anybody? No, I don't either. Huh? I'm just trying to encourage someone else to say they, they're smarter than me. Because I don't know. And so if an adult and someone that's been through seminary doesn't understand everything about communion, I know a child doesn't. But here's what we need to know about communion. We need to know that Jesus loves you so much that he went to the cross. God became a person. That's amazing, isn't it? God became a person. And he came and he lived and he walked on this earth and he died on a cross to pay the price. Say what? To deliver our sins. Exactly. Way to go, Brielle. To deliver us from our sins. And so the Jews talks about the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, you know, when you cut yourself and you bleed, it doesn't feel good, does it? But the blood of Jesus was so much more powerful than our blood because it was God's blood that could pay the price for our sin. But the Bible also tells us 
that his body was broken for us. And that's what the bread talks about. And if his body was broken for us, do you all know what the scripture says? By his stripes we were... Do you know? By our stripes we were... Ha! He... he healed. Uh, <laughs> healed. 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 What does healed mean? Healed yourself. Yeah, what does it mean to be healed? Uh, like whenever you get... Like when, like when it bleeds. It gets back healing. Yes. And then it's healed. And it's better, right? Yeah. So it says that by his stripes we were healed. So the body represents the broken, the, the bread represents the body broken for us. So you know what I like to compare this to? Some of you how many take how many take a prescription once in a while in this building? You don't have to tell me what it is. Just once in a while you take one. That's good. That's fine. Amen. I believe this is God's prescription. So when we take communion, I believe we ought to take this in our homes. I believe every time we're sick, every time we're having a hard time, every time we need God to move in our life in some way, we ought to take communion as a family. And for kids, it's, it's a little bit like having a snack, right? So I never know a kid that doesn't want a piece of bread and some juice, you know? But we want them to know it's more than just a snack, right? It's about Jesus loving us and dying on the cross for us. And if they understand that, they understand as much as we do. Amen? And I think that's wonderful. So we're going to pray. All right, so who wants to go first? Would, would you rather pray for the juice or the bread? The juice. The juice. Okay, so you'll go second. So Alicia will go first. All right, so... Oh, Alicia? Nice. I, Leora, I'm sorry. <laughs> so confused. So confused. Okay. Um, hold up your bread, everybody. Now, do you, do you need me to help you? A little bit. Okay. All right, you hold up your bread. Uh, by the way, it does tell us in 1 Corinthians... That one's cracked. Yeah, it'll be okay. 1 Corinthians 11, verse... 23, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. This is the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. All right, so we're going to pray. So I'll say a line and you can say it after me. Okay. Is that good? Is that what you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your body. For your body. That was broken. That was broken for us. For us. That we might be healed. That we might be healed. So I pray. So I pray that you heal us. That you heal us in our body. In our body. Our mind. Our mind. And our spirit. In our spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's eat together. You have to let that chew on that for a second, right? Is it gone? All right, Brielle. So you want me to help you and pray with you like I did, Eliora? Okay. Turn a look at him so they can see your pretty face. <laughs> Don't we love our kids around here? Amen. All right, so I'm going to pray and you pray after me, okay? You ready? Thank you. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. i got to read the scripture. Verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. All right, we ready? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your blood. For your blood. That was shed. That was shed. For me. For me. That I might be forgiven. That I might be forgiven. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. My past. My past. Is forgiven. Is forgiven. Because of your blood. Because of your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's drink together. Amen. Can you give our kids a big hand? Come on. It's hard to clap holding the cup, isn't it? Good job. Good job. Thank you. Good job. All right. Come on. Give them another big hand. They do a good job. Come on. Amen. Well, good morning. So, this past month, I really actually only taught three Sundays, but we, we taught on the Psalms. And it, one of the things I really enjoy about teaching is that it makes you 
think about what you're teaching and kind of dig in a little deeper. And we taught about what the Psalms are, what the purpose of the Psalms are. And the first, the first thing we, we learned was that the Psalms and songs, is it not on? Test. Uh, yes, it's on. Hold it a little closer. Mouth. And there's some music in the background on this. I'm like a kid's toy or something. It's okay. okay. Sorry, to All right. It. I'll put it closer to my mouth. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> okay, my voice is soft. It's a little challenge when you have a bunch of little kids all yelling at the same time. <laughs> but we talked about the, our emotions and how the psalms were used to express the emotions of the psalm writer. You know, we talked about how David, because a lot of the psalms were written by David, what he was going through. Um, he was being persecuted. He didn't even know if he would see another day. He didn't understand why God had him in that place. He, he had these promises from God, and there he was running for his life, hiding in caves, you know, and he had a lot of emotions that he pinned down. And so we talked about how God wants to hear how we feel, even if it's not pretty. And we can cry out to him. We can tell him that we're sad or angry or scared, but that it always comes back. And David always came back to, just a minute, baby, you stand right here with mommy, <laughs> that he, he still knew who God was. He still knew that God loved him and he was in control. So we molded little figures. This is what my kids were doing of what makes us happy. So here's a little bird, I think, and something. I think Annalise did this. Yes. Okay. And then the next day, that's yours. Yes, baby. We talked about, well, next day, the next Sunday, the Psalms and songs being used to worship God. And so we made tambourines. But... One thing I was I try to stress to the kids is that is that songs praising God is spiritual warfare. So when we praise God, we sing to him, we praise him, we announce to the world who he is that we put the enemy to flight. Amen. And that's so important, isn't it, to learn even, you know, remember as an adult that is in our praise. It's when we sometimes least feel like it is that that's when it's most important to praise Him because that's when things start changing in our lives. And then the last Sunday we talked about how the Psalms declare who God is and His works. So we made, Isaac has his, his little flag, we made little flags here and we talked about what that meant, and we dwelt upon the, the psalm particularly that talked about you know, how God forms us in our mother's you know, belly and how we are fearfully and wonderfully made and how we can turn back to the psalms when we are feeling discouraged and unsure about where we stand with God and where we are in life is that the psalms will always remind us of who he is, declare, they declare his works, they declare his um, love for us. Just a minute, baby. And um, how important that is to declare that to the world. And I think that we've got quite a few young musicians and Asher <laughs> talking to you here now, particularly now, lots of young musicians, is that God can use music to not only be a ministry of worship to him, but also to declare to the world who he is and that's so important to do especially right now there's so many people who don't know who God is right kiddos and the the um, song that Evangelist is going to sing in here in a minute I wonder as I wander was written by a little homeless girl and that was written in the 30s um, and here in the Appalachia so she was a poor homeless Appalachian girl and an itinerant preacher um, who's passing through North Carolina right just right up the road from here in the mountains he heard her sing and he got the verse and the basic melody out of her and then he went on to kind of clean it up and he wrote a few more verses but it's traditionally sung around Christmas and I was thinking about that 
is that there's a, a verse in it that is the king, he's the king of kings, right? And you could have had anything he wanted. And there's a verse that says, um, a, a star in the sky, you could have had a star in the sky or a bird on the wing. All of God's angels, you know, to sing your praises, but he chose to come as a homeless child, the most humblest form possible, and as a servant to all. And I was thinking about that, is that how important it is that we in turn share with the broken world. And kids, this is so important. That you, ha you know Jesus, and you have that beautiful, beautiful gift of knowing his love for you, and how important that is to sh tell the world, right? And share with them, it, well, however you can, through, through, you know, just telling them, or through songs that you sing, but that the, the God of gods, King of kings, creator of heaven, of earth, came as a little humble child and was a servant to all. And how wonderful that is. <laughs> Amen. So, okay, well, Evangela, are you ready, baby? Are we ready up there? Okay. You want to come up here, sweetie pie? Okay, and Eliora, I think, is going to, right? You're going to do something, too. It's kind of a mimery of a beautiful worship song. Okay. So you want to sit up here with me? Come here. Okay. You want to sit up here too, Isaac? Okay. Jesus, my Savior, did come for 
to die. Only people like you, like I, wonder as they wonder under the sky. <laughs> Wonderful. What a good job. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, come on, give another big hand. <laughs> Kevin, I don't know if you want this or this. Either one's okay. Oh, are you, oh sorry, Eliora. Okay, give Eliora a big hand. Okay. Troubled sea, whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. to show Phenomenal. Great job. My goodness, my goodness. I think we ought to have a dance team right here. <laughs> we 
we got we got a beginning of it right now. Kevin, come on. I, I want to get out of the way here. I, I'm just. Are we excited about what God's doing in our kids? Anybody? Come on. I'm grateful for Kevin and for Pamela. Amen. We love y'all. Go for it. All right. Uh, first, before we get started, I'd like to get all the kids in the center here. So all you guys come sit down in the center right through here. And Pamela's going to come and sit with them. And if we could get one more adult volunteer to sit on the other side of them. Just one more adult. That's all we need. And Pam will get one side. and You guys can sit down and face, face this way. Guys, back up just a bit. Just a bit. All right, because I'm going to stand here. You guys can all sit down right there. All right. Okay, so uh, we kind of want to just do a kids' class the way we would do it on Tuesday night, and I want to uh, let you guys see that, see what we do. Uh, it's no big deal. It's just we just get to know the kids, and uh, we always start out with just asking them if they have any stories they want to tell. So, does anybody have any stories they'd like to tell me? Okay, you got a microphone. Today, my kitty, she, um, she scratched me. What? That's why I don't like cats, because they scratch. What's your story? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Does anybody else have a story? You got a story? Today, my cat, Atlantis, uh, climbed inside my bed, and he stayed there until I took a broom and swept him out. He literally got in the bed. <laughs> All right, so no more, we don't, we don't like cats here, do we? Nobody, you like cats? All right. Cats? All right, you got one? My cat, Pharaoh, likes to lay in my bed a lot when I wake up. He likes to do that a lot. <laughs> All right. My cat thinks she's the president. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. I had Chinese food this week. <laughs> Do you have one? Um, we, um, our cousin has a cat that likes to scare our cat. Hang on, hang on one second. I got a question. What is the name of your cat? Woodbud. Ro Rosebud. Apple butter. And apple butter. Parsley. <laughs> okay. Apple butter. Apple butter. <laughs> apple butter. You got a story? Okay, tell me your story. I love to eat apple. <laughs> apples? I like to throw apples. Every time when my Yorkie takes a bath, he goes wild. Oh. All right, I got another question. Has anybody ever played with a flashlight? Yeah. A flashlight? Uh -huh. All right. You guys have all played with flashlights? Has anybody ever got in trouble playing with a flashlight? No. You have? <laughs> have you ever shined it in somebody's eyes? You've never? I'm not saying you guys should shine a flashlight in somebody's eyes. <laughs> you hit them. <laughs> well, have you ever had one shined in your eyes? Have you ever like had one looked? You didn't. Does it? Have you ever had seen somebody like shine in their eyes? Sometimes it hurts your eyes and you can't see good for a minute. Any other stories? You sleep a lot. How much? Wait till you're a teenager, and then you're really going to sleep a lot. You have a story? Is it about zombies? Okay. She likes to tell zombie stories. Guys are not real. 
ahead. Okay, my apple butter just um. <laughs> Just, um, just, just, <laughs> killed a bunny. <laughs> My kitty just killed a bunny. Well, all right, you got one? All right, go. One second, I'll get you. Go ahead. Bullseye. Right? <laughs> all right, that is the best story all morning. Here you go. All right. There's always cats trying to eat our bunnies a lot, and there's pretty cats around here. Yep. Well, that is why I like dogs better than cats. Okay, one more story. Isaac, do you, you got a story you haven't spoken yet? Um, one time. <laughs> My dog Josie, she just jumped up on, on my bed and crawled under my pillow. And then when I came in here, I accidentally threw the pillow that Josie was in. <laughs> That's funny. One time I act, I better not say it. Never mind. <laughs> um, I, I was, um, playing. Played with um Adeline and um she started getting all mad at me. <laughs> and last one. My cat is named Apple Butter and my dog is named Biscuit. And they go together. You have one. All right, this is the last one, guys. My cat, Chrysanthemum, she always sleeps. She would never. So something to know about these kids is they all love cats. And uh, I had to make a rule, and our rule is when we make, take prayer requests, we are not allowed to pray for cats. I, I said that in this children's church, we only pray for dogs. No cats. Right? No cats. Okay. All right, so I need two youth group, youth age volunteers. Do we have anybody youth age in here? That is volunteer. Anybody? Evie? Evie will do one. I have two two signs that I need people to hold. So I need one more person that will hold them. Come on. All right. Where are those at? There we go. All right. So as you see these signs, there are two faces on both. There's a face on one side, a face on the other. All right. So... There we go. So you guys got to hold those faces up. So turn that one to the angry face and turn that one to the scared face. Yep. Just hold that up. And I won't, I won't be too long, guys. So your arms shouldn't get tired yet. Okay. <laughs> Scoot in. Stand on that black tape. There we go. That works. All right. So the two characters in this story, that is Ananias, and he's scared. This is Saul, and Saul is angry, okay? <laughs> so today, today we're going to talk about a man that has two names. Have you ever met somebody with two names? Like two, two names that they go by. Who, who's the person you knew that had two names? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, some people have like two first names in a row. But this guy was like two names. Like like sometimes he would write his name this way and sometimes he would write his name another way. If they'd ask him who he was, if he, depending on who he was talking to, he would give him one name and another. But his the name we're, we're going to call him by right now is Saul. All right, so you guys might have heard this story before, but this story is about a man that had two names, and he was an angry man. His name was Saul. And Saul, Saul had this issue. Saul had this issue because he was angry. But see, he wasn't angry because he was just an angry person. He was angry 
because he didn't like that people were following Jesus. Who? Just like the Grinch. You know that story too? So just like the Grinch, Saul was angry all the time. He was angry at all these people following Jesus. And the more people that followed Jesus, the angrier he would get. He would chase them down. And he was so angry. Hey, Isaac. He was so angry that he wanted to hurt people that were Christians. Have you ever seen anybody get hurt? That's what Saul liked to do to people that followed Jesus. If pe Saul saw... A hundred times? And you've seen somebody get hurt? Ooh. Well, that's... A, you win. You broke your back. <laughs> well, one second. Well, Saul would, uh, Saul would see people following Jesus. He would get so mad, he would want to hurt them. And then he would want to put them in jail. So he'd want to hurt them, put them in jail. And then while they were in jail, he's thinking of other ways he's going to hurt them. Yeah, so he heard that there were some Christians in this town, some people following Jesus, and he decided to get on his horse, and he's going to ride down to this town, and he's going to try to hurt them and put them in jail. And he's angry. Really angry. You guys make a mean face. Like, if you're mad, make your mad face. Does some of you guys ever get mad? Yeah, Ellie's got a good one. <laughs> good mean face. All right, so he would always have this face on. And he's riding his horse, and then one day, as he's riding down to, to, to hurt these Christians, these followers of Jesus, a bright light shines all around him. Yep. So when he's on his way, shh, when he's on his way, he has this bright light shine again around him, and then he hears Jesus talk to him. And what he says is, why are you trying to hurt my followers, pal? Why are you trying to hurt them? And at that moment, Saul falls down, and that bright light that shined in his eyes, just like that flashlight, you know that bright light? See that flashlight? So bright, it hurt his eyes, and he went blind, and he couldn't see for three days. Three days. <laughs> so he couldn't see. Right, so then he goes into this town. He is laid up in bed for three days. He can't see. And then God decides to speak to somebody else because in that town, there was another guy named Ananias. And then God tells Ananias, he speaks to him and he says, hey, you know that guy Saul? The guy that hurts Christians? The guy, the guy that you guys run from? He's over in a bed. I need you to go to him and heal him. I need you to lay hands on him, and, and I'm going to give him his sight back when you pray for him. So Ananias, when he heard that he had to go talk to Saul, he was scared. Why do you think Ananias was scared of Saul? Saul was a mean guy. Ananias was a follower of Jesus. And what does Saul do to followers of Jesus? No, he hurts them. So Ananias was afraid he was going to get hurt if he goes over and talks to Saul. But you know what? God gave him courage and gave him the courage and changed him from scared to brave. So you can change it. So now he's brave. Do you see? That's a brave face. So he goes from this and God changes him to this. So without God, he was scared. Then God makes him brave. Because I'm not a good artist. <laughs> All right. So Ananias goes and he's going to go talk to Saul. He's got to do what? He's got to lay hands on him, pray for him, and then Saul's going to get his eyesight back. So he goes in there and he's brave. He's not scared anymore. And he sees this guy laying with his eyes all blind and he can't move and he's kind of getting depressed and he's praying and, and God. And then he lays hands and prays for him. And then Saul <laughs> becomes happy. And after this, Saul starts calling himself Paul. And he gets two names. So when he was angry in the Bible, we hear about this guy Saul. 
But later, as soon as he gets his eyes healed, he starts being happy, and he starts telling people his name is Paul. <laughs> yeah, they have pointy noses. Because, I don't know. <laughs> So, guys, shh, here's what I want you to know, is that God changes people. Do you understand? Sometimes people will be angry all the time, but if you see somebody that's angry all the time, don't get angry back at them. Just know that they just need Jesus to help them become happy. Do you understand? So Jesus will make people that are angry become happy. Jesus will take people that are sad and have frowns on their face. And if you introduce Jesus to those sad people, those frowns become smiles. And they'll be happy. Do you understand? And sometimes people that don't have families, right? They don't have moms and dads and, and, and brothers and sisters and people that love them. And, and they're not fortunate. But then you introduce them to Jesus. And Jesus becomes their family for them. And they know love. People that don't know love, Jesus changes them to someone who gives love. Do you understand? So I want you guys to know that Jesus loves you. Does everybody know that? Jesus loves you? Ellie, do you know Jesus loves you? All right. Does everybody raise your hand if you know Jesus loves you? Okay. Now put your hands down. Raise your hands if you can tell me why you know Jesus loves you. How do you know Jesus loves you? Because he, he created us. Created you. That's one way of knowing. That's another way. See, Jesus looked down at this planet, and he was like, I see all these people. One sec. He said, I see all these, these people on here, but what I really want to be on this planet is another one of these children here. And he called you out by name and made you guys. That's one way you know that he loves you. He created woman and man. Yes, he did. Because he's awesome? Yes, he is. But how do you know Jesus loves you? Because he died on the cross for us. Yay. A great one. Because he rose from the dead. Yes. See, the one main way you know Jesus loves you is because he died for you. Jesus died for you. I mean, that is, that is the ultimate testimony that somebody loves you, right? He, he saw that you need to be saved and rescued, so he died just to rescue you. Go ahead. He's like a superhero. He is the only superhero, really. He's saved everyone. That's right, so, all right, we got one more. Go ahead. And, um, he, um, Go ahead, buddy. um, he also made bad people. He also made bad people, that's true. He did. All right, guys, so you know that Jesus loves you because? He's better than a superhero. It's good. He also loves people who do bad things and don't believe him. That's right. All right, last one. He... Loves people, it doesn't matter what they do, but he still loves them. That's right. You guys are awesome. Now, I have one last question, and then we're going to pray. Does anybody know their memory verse that we've been doing on Tuesday nights? Putting you on the spot? Um, die. Uh... <laughs> All sense of the glory of God. Very good. All, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Does anybody else want to say it? Does anybody want to say it? All have 
blessing of the glory of God. <laughs> All have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Perfect. All have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Very good. All right, any more? We're going to give you guys time to speak. All have sinned the glory of God. <laughs> really good. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's pray, and then we're going to hand it back over to Pastor Matthew, okay? All right, let's bow our heads, and let's close our eyes. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Lord, we thank you for this great group of children, God. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given us, God, this mission uh, to take care of these children, Lord, to minister to them, to serve them, Lord, to nurture them to help them to grow lord and to introduce them to you and to your love and to your compassion and god for your uh, your desires for their life god we just ask that you help us and and help us to do a good job when we're representing you to these children lord help us to uh to encourage them to know you better lord and we just thank you for coming and spending time with them today and we just thank you in jesus name amen all right pastor matthew Y'all stay, stay where you're at. Stay where you're at. Stay where you're at. Come on, give God a big hand for all of that. Wasn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. Zach, Zach come on up. Um, we want to sing. We'll, let's close out with a song. And I was trying to think of what would be a good song that you all would like us to sing. So maybe I, I don't really know what song. So is there one that you really like that we sing at church a lot that you'd like us to sing as we close out today? What do you? What's one you really like? Raise a hallelujah? You want to do raise a hallelujah? Huh? And never do God like that. Yeah? What? I think raise a hallelujah would be a great one to end service with. Let's all stand up together. Kids, you stay right where you're at. Don't go anywhere. Huh? Okay. I'm going to pull it up too. Because i got to have words. Alright. It's always dangerous when you Google song lyrics because anyone could have put them in there and they could be right, could be wrong. Alright. Are you excited about what God's doing in our lives and the lives of our children? Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right, so we're going to sing this song. Y'all asked for it, so we need you to sing it with us, okay? Can you do that? Yeah? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. All right. I raise a hallelujah. Help me. Since I my enemies. There we go. Slow down a little bit. Will you still do it? I raise a hallelujah. Don't race. Don't race. Don't race. Slow down. Nothing is.
is a melody. You need an adult to join the circle and help them out. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you've lost your hold on me. Yeah. Here you go. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder. Death is defeated, the King is alive. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Sing. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is Welcome back. I sure hope you enjoyed the service. I love seeing the kids dancing and praising God there at the end and enjoying the presence of God. We love our children. And this month has all been about the, the God's heart towards rescuing children. And there is a, a, a sad part to that, but there's a joyful part to that as we see children being loved and, and loving God in return. So thank you for being part of our service today and look forward to joining you again next week online. You all matter to us. You're so important and we appreciate you so very much. Let us know if we can do anything for you. We want to continue to lift you up in prayer. Hope to see you again soon. Till next time, have a great day. God bless you. We love you. Mean it. See you soon. Bye.